I see you have uh, one of your toys here in front of us. Can you uh, share with us exactly what it is that you're going to be doing and uh, demonstrating? Or yeah, definitely. I think one of the most asked questions is, uh, "Do you talk into this?" You know, okay. This is, there, you do absolutely nothing. The sound comes out of the keyboard into this uh, driver and comes out of this. Okay. Comes out of here. Okay. So you're pretty much speaking without using your voice. Okay. So Let's check it like, out. For example, um, let's see what can we do? Uh, California, no sad body. California, no sad body. Stuff like that. Wow. So. Wow. Um, I fell in love with this after I heard uh, a ringtone from a co-worker. I didn't know what the hell this was. <laughs> I was Googling like an idiot, like robotic sound, um, robot voice. And uh, because I was too embarrassed to ask, I was like, I do. Right. Like, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know that song. Um, and then I ran into a, a video and then I ended up buying my own. I, I bought my own driver, but I didn't have enough money to... Uh, by an actual microcord. Okay. So I used my knowledge that I had with uh, Native Instruments and actually made my own patch in Massive and used that. So I was pulling up to shows with a MIDI keyboard and a driver and I was scaring the crap out of the engineers because I'd pull up and they'd be like, oh, what do you need? What do you need? I'm just like, I just need a mic. That's all I need. Right. And I was even tripping out some, you know, some of the talk boxers had been doing it. Like, how are you connecting the stuff to your MIDI keyboard and your laptop and you have an interface and you have all this and that? It's like, it's, it's basic science for me. Right. But for everybody else, it's like algebra, you know. Right. You know. Yeah, you're you're, you're right. I mean, that's how it kind of was for scratching because today, as weird as it may sound, there's names for scratching. Back then, you just fucking scratched. Like right. uh, I never said this was a name for this, but to them, it was like, well, we got to name it something. No, you don't. But for you, it just came naturally. Yeah. You know, that's dope. That's dope. Anything else you want to share with us or play for us? Um. Yeah. I'm, I'm addicted to this shit, so that's why yeah, you could um, just play for me if you like so. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, the first records that I the the first record that I actually did on the talk box was actually a record that I did for Mr. Capone, uh -huh. and was "Let's Just Get Away." Okay. Um, funny thing about that record is when I first got my uh, my beat machine, I was like, uh, "Hey, I want I want to produce a record for somebody," and uh, little did I know, years later, I'd cross paths with him, and. I showed him the record. I was like, hey, I did this for you, dog, like a couple years ago. And he's like, no way, tripping out. And it just came in like nothing while we were in the studio. And they, he played the beat. He's like, oh, shit, you produced this? Yeah. And then the talk box came in with the iconic line. There's even people doing tutorials on how to play it. And it was tripping me out. So it's the... Let's just get away. So... Jump into my caddy and let's go for a ride Let's just get away, no, no Ooh, I really hate it when you make me cry Let's just get away Wow So when he heard that, he's like, oh shit, that's a banger, we gotta do that one And uh, after that, it was kind of like, I'm gonna stick to this Right You know, and then I started pulling up to uh, shows for shits and giggles because I did this cover of Saturday Love, Sherelle's Saturday Love. Hmm. And um, then uh, people started paying me like, here's, here's 100 bucks, here's 200 bucks, thanks for coming out. And then I started listening like, oh shit, I can make money off this? Right. So, and I never thought that I was gonna, my intention was never to be an artist. It was always shits and giggles. Right. I right. never knew that I would be here where I'm at today, but this instrument here has opened so many doors for me that I could not, I would have never imagined being here three, four, five years ago. Right, right. Can, can, can I hear a demonstration of that uh, Sherelle song? Um, I can find the key. It's been a while since I played it. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. I mean, you're playing a different key. I think people are enjoying it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, love, love. There it is. There it is. That's there dope. There it is. So. That's dope. No, okay, now, uh, before we go on with this talk box, let me go back a little bit. When did you first take interest in playing keyboards? Um, I think when I, well, I guess when I was little, I always saw my dad do it. And then um, before my sister passed, she always had an interest in doing it. And then uh, I figured if you don't know how to play keyboards, you can't really make beats. So. Right. 
Um, up until this day, I wouldn't know where to tell you what a C note is on the scale. Uh -huh. I just know it's the white button under the two black lines next to the three. Right. <laughs> so that's all I know. Like I play by ear. That that's really good. That could, you know it's funny. Every musician that I ever hired played by ear because sometimes I would hear something and I would hum it to his ass. And he was like, is this what you're, what, you're, what you're hearing? And I'm like, that's exactly what I'm hearing. Yeah. So, and then sometimes, you know, of course, he would elaborate and say, you know what, let's uh, add this to it, you know. So I just never had the patience to learn, but I always wanted to teach my, my both of my boys how to play because if you want to learn to play music, start here. And then from right. there, we just open up doors. Right. Now, I know this might be self-explanatory. Who was the first person that, that you heard that inspired you to look into the talk box or, or was it Roger and Zap? It was, it was Roger. Okay. It was uh, definitely the Zap band. Um, and then I wasn't introduced in Two Fingers until I would say like a year or two after I had my box. Okay. I didn't know who Fingers was. Okay. And I was like, oh shit. Like I started listening and then I became a fan. Right. And um, then after that, um, after I started, you know, surfacing, everybody's like hey yo i need your patch i need your patch and it's like dude why is my patch the holy grail of talk boxing you know? right right so um i just had a different ear for it i guess i i mean it, it fell into um everything fell into place like it should and now it's right. just one the talk boxing community is, is is so big and united um it's amazing because now um actually i have, I have my other toy which is the electro spit that is a wireless talk box. It's a mobile talk box. Wow. And that was actually created by Bosco. Mm. For those who know who don't know who Bosco is, Bosco is one of the legendary producers. He's been a Tupac. He's produced for, you know, uh, he's been E40 Records. And I've had the opportunity, you know, to uh, meet up with Bosco and and have this product in my hand. And now it's it's my go-to tool when I'm in the studio. Um, it's, it's good for, uh, I've still not, haven't developed a, you know, Kind of a used to it yet because yeah. we we just you know i barely got my, my hands on mine uh, so i use it in a more controlled environment but now we're transitioning to using it to live only so now it's going to be none of this wires and you know guts hanging wow. out it's just my keyboard the electro spit and that's it and that's what they call it the electro spit the electro spit yeah wow so so now how, how many years combined now have you say that you've been playing the talk box now i'd say a solid four Okay, solid four. And um, uh, uh, I, I mean, like, have you ever, because I see you got the cork. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to uh, hook it up with uh, the mini MOOC, which was uh, most people in the 90s, when I hired to play talk box on my, on my songs, mm -hmm. they would hook it up to the, uh, the mini MOOC. I've, tr I've tried one. I've tried the mini MOOC and I also have uh, tried the DX100, uh -huh. which is what MC Magic uses and Zap they use. Right. Um, I've just never gotten my hands on one, so okay. I've just kind of stuck to the to the micro cork. But rumor has it, I still haven't went down, even though he's invited me thousands of times to come down to the studio. Uh, Fingers' his driver is like it'll make anything as powerful as that Moog sound. Like I know it, it sounds. I always tell everybody, I know it sounds a little inappropriate, but just that feeling of the low bass. It's right. like every talk boxer knows you want to feel that. It, right. It's just. It's just something different. Unless right. you're a talk boxer, you wouldn't really understand. Right. I understand. I know three people that Roger made them talk boxes for. Uh, Sir Jinx, uh, DJ Quick, and another guy by the name of Fred Rick. Uh, he did a lot of stuff for Dog Pound. Uh, Fred Rick was one of the first guys that I got to play talk box on one of my songs. That was in 1997. I did a song for Mellow Man Ace, and it never came out. But I still have it on actually on two inch reel and actually on that machine, uh, mm -hmm. that tape as well. But uh, all of those guys played it on the mini moog. The thing that it was it's hard about the mini moog because Roger, as you can see his demonstration, he knew all the oscillators, he knew all the sounds, and it's it's really it, to me. I tr I I had bought I collected mini moogs. So that's, that's why I asked. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the the, the, the micro moog. Uh, um, fuck, I had like five different ones. The actual mini moog, but. You have to know what, what you're fucking with to get exactly. the right sound. Yeah. And that's the hard part. For me, I was like, fuck that. So I would I would tell my boy, come here, man. I want this sound. I would go to an old rock song. Like, for an example, uh, 
when I first heard the first talk box, I didn't know it was a talk box because they called it uh, the bag, right. which was uh, Peter Frampton. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trying to remember the name of the song that he, but he was like, wah, 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 and he played it off of a guitar. Yes. And I thought that shit was so fucking dope. You know, I didn't know what it was. And then later on, 1980, I heard uh, uh, more bounce. And I thought that shit was fucking insane, you know. But uh, now, uh, let me ask the question that a lot of people may know or may not know. Uh, how did you get the name uh, Magic Girl? Um, it all goes back to shits and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I was dealing with, uh, with the person... Um, who's actually uh, the cause of a lot of uh, drama and downfalls with my career, unfortunately. Um, we were in the studio one day, we were like, hey, we gotta get a name for you. And uh, we're like, uh, okay. And uh, it's not really, you know, not to talk shit about anybody, this is just what happened. Right. And uh, he said, uh, let's do uh, MC, what he said? He, oh, a MC Sugar Fingers or something like that. I was like, "Fool, you're fucking retarded!" Like that sounds so stupid. And then we ended up coming in with names. And then um, I was like, "Dude, let's just do Miss Lady Magic." So I was formerly known as Miss Lady Magic prior to being being Magic Girl. And for those of people who are really true Magic Girl fans, know that. Um, and he's like, "Yeah, so it'll be like, yo." He's like, "Yeah, that's a good idea. It's a mixture of everything, like Miss for the Miss Lady Pinks, and then the Lady for." Um, I think it was Lady Shy or something like that, some rapper. And then the magic for MC Magic. I was like, no, dude, like it's just it just sounds cool, you know? And that's how the name come apart. And then it was just a joke. I never took it seriously, but right. he started telling everybody, Yeah, that's that's Miss Lady Magic. That's Lady Magic. And then so everybody started calling me Lady Magic. And now everybody just calls me Magic. So after um I signed over to uh High Power, uh we were gonna change my name again. Because unfortunately, I got screwed over, you know, copyrights and stuff like that. They ended up buying Miss Lady Magic, uh, so I couldn't use that name anymore. So wow. we're like, let's change your name. And we were thinking, we were thinking, and then we ended up coming up with Magic Girl. And um, you know, uh, Capote was like, hey, you know, let's just let's run it by Miss MC Magic out of respect. I was all right, we can do that. So I text him, and he texts me back immediately. He's like, yeah, Mija, there's nothing I was like, I just want to make sure, you know, because I, I really wasn't trying to use magic at all from the beginning because right. I didn't want to seem, make it seem like I was trying to build a career off of something he already did. But in a way, it made sense because it's kind of like, okay, everybody knows magic for talk blocks, so why not be magic, you know? Right. So, and then everybody was already calling me magic, so it was kind of hard to go from magic girl to, like, something different like example just lady of rage or some some crazy rapper name you know <laughs> and so it was kind of hard it always just stuck with me and i kind of just got stuck with it okay, okay so that's how that came about so 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 when you started like uh, you know it's funny because i have my boy battle cat uh dj battle cat here much love and respect to dj battle cat and i asked him was it hard to keep that in your mouth and he told me this he said you know i was told that try talking with the straw on the side of your mouth he said so i literally did that he goes, and then when I put it in, he goes, after a while, it just became second nature. Like, I just, you know, I had no problem, you yeah. know, doing it. W w was it hard to adjust in talking to, to it? Um, uh, it into it? Yeah, it was. I had to do a couple of uh, adjustments and modifications for it to fit my mouth. Because every, every your your mouth is an instrument. So no, if you were to get jump on this today, you would sound different than I would. Nobody yeah. will sound exactly the same. And I think that's the point that everybody misses, like... I will never sound like Roger. I will never sound like Fingers. Fingers will always be Fingers. Roger will always be Roger. And um, so I had to kind of adjust it to make it my sound. And that's what I have today. It's my sound. Okay. So. Now, uh, uh, when you decide, again, you said shits and giggles. That's how you started it. And then shit started working. People started paying you for it. Was there ever a time uh, since the time you started that you started looking into, you know what, let me look up some of the greats that might have played this before other than Roger and Zap. Did you do your, your homework? Yeah, on? that's okay. when I started running into like Peter Frampton and then, you know, I, I ran back to, to history. Like you can even hear it in Disney's Dumbo, hmm. the talking voice box from way back before, you know, 1980s. Right. And a lot of people don't know anything more than Roger. Roger has been so iconic to the talk box yes. community that's like, all they know is Roger, like Roger invented it. Like, no, before Roger, there was Peter Frampton before, you know, and before and that there, Stevie, was, there was Stevie Wonder. Yes. And you know, what's crazy is Stevie Wonder has actually demoed the Electrospit. So the Electrospit has been in a lot of hands of a lot of P 
people that I would never, you know, wow. imagine. It's just mind blowing. And um, it's also mind blowing to know that the, it's it's such a united community. And it's really cool, actually, to to be a part of that family. And I've, I've had a lot of love and support from the from the Troutman family themselves, really, which is really cool because it's, you know, somebody like little old me, it's, uh, nobody, you know, it's get, getting a lot of love and support from people who are actually established. OK, you yeah. know what? Uh, do, do you mind getting your other toy uh, ready? And give the people yeah, sure. a little demonstration uh, of, of your toy. And once again, uh, this is something else. This is uh, if I'm correct, wireless, or is that what this you said? Is mobile. Mobile. A yeah, mobile not telephone. completely wireless. We still got an auxiliary that connects, uh -huh. but it's uh, the world's first mobile talk box. And like I said, uh, Bosco invented this after uh, he had a little bit of indiscrepancies while performing live with uh, Kanye West wow. because he couldn't take all of his cables on, you know, on uh, stage. So yeah. we, we can't accommodate you, which is the problem that I have a lot of times with uh, when I go to shows. Like, you know, we don't have electricity. I have to carry around a a 20 foot like uh, an extension cord yeah blitz kind of ghetto you know <laughs> like <laughs> you're pulling up to a show with a 20 foot extension cord yeah. and um so he kind of innovated and made this and there's actually an app for it um it's it's really cool and uh, he's customized it so you look here you get you can do two colors you do the red and then you do blue okay so and that's just for show right it's, it doesn't do anything like fancy or anything right and, and how long have you had this I've had this, Let's see, when did I run into Bosco? I think I picked it up from, from him in Oakland, I want to say about five months ago, four or five months wow, ago. Wow, so it's somewhat still fairly new It's fairly you. new, yeah. And, and have you gotten used to it? A, a little bit. So, so you probably know uh, Bosco's done res records like, uh, so, uh, Probably put it a little louder. Like the workout song. So right. a lot of people don't know that's Bosco. That's Bosco. Wow. So wow. Um, so this is, an, uh, just for the people that are watching, nothing goes in your mouth this time. No. Th this is just uh, on, uh, I guess it's rest on your neck? Yes, it rests on your neck. It goes between, um, in the soft spot of your neck area, uh -huh. between the, the, the major bone here, down here. Uh-huh. And it actually explains the science of the talk box fairly well, because a lot of people think, like I said, like you're you're talking, like no, you don't talk into it at all. And uh, it's actually really cool because not only can I connect it to uh, my micro cord, there's actually a, a mobile app. So now I can pull up to to a show if I wanted to and be like, you know what, I don't want to use my keyboard today. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my phone. So all I got to do is plug in my phone, uh, open up the Electro Spit app and uh, just play like so it has absolutely everything wow. that it would use you just got to know how to use your phone and has all of the major scales you can do uh, modulation everything uh you can transpose you know change your octaves change the buzz and stuff like that so it's actually really cool